Good morning, everyone. All right. Uh, my very first sermon is asking the question, is the Bible truth? We're going to go into John 18, 37, chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. The title for the sermon is also asking the question, Is the Bible truth? And that's a very important question. I believe that question is actually being asked a lot by Christians, but they're afraid to actually ask the question. So I'm going to ask it for you. Is the Bible truth? There are only two points we will be looking at. The first one is a reason to doubt. And the second point is a reason to believe. So let's just dive in right into the first point, a reason to doubt. It's been over 2,000 years, and the question that was asked then is still asked now, what is truth? The Bible teaches us that God is truth. Psalms 33, 4, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. Exodus 34, 6, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Another word for abundant is plentiful, meaning having in large quantities of, never lacking, and always more than enough. If we look at uh, John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Well, with God being truth, that means his every word is truth too, right? Let's see what the Bible says. Jesus said in John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Whose word is Jesus talking about? He's talking about our Father's word. He confirms that in Matthew 4.4. 4. But he, being Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So God never lies? What does the Bible say? In Numbers 23.19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Hebrews 6.18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. God not being a man has no need to lie. Not only that, but it is impossible for him to lie. So with God being truth itself, and God incapable of lying, then book sales on scriptures must be booming, right? The British and Foreign Bible Society tells us that as of 2021, the Christian Bible is the number one best-selling book of all time. When the first printing press was invented by Germ in Germany, the first book they decided to try their machine on was the Bible. It took three years to print the first copy in Latin. The Bible today is known that Bible today is known as the Gutenberg Bible. That was back in 1454. Now, on average, there are 100 million Bibles printed each year. It was projected that in 2022, by words rated, there were more than 6 billion Bibles in print. There were 7.9 billion people that same year. Isn't that something to think about? Almost a Bible for every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. It looks like God is on a mission, doesn't it? In the U.S., there are 20 million Bibles sold every year. 166 million Bibles sold each month. 384,615 Bibles sold per week. 54,945 Bibles sold every day. 2,289 Bibles sold per hour. 38 Bibles sold per minute. 6.4 Bibles sold every 10 seconds. In addition to the Bible sold, another 115,055 Bibles are given away every single day. Tell me God ain't hard at work trying to save souls. And the United States accounts for a quarter of newly printed Bible sales every year. Now, I was surprised to find out that America's only a quarter of Bible sales. 
The United States is the largest Christian country in the world. According to PEW Research Center, back in the, ni- in the late 1900s, I mean, I'm sorry, back in 1970, 90% of Americans identified as Christians. By 2020, 50 years later, that number dropped to 64%. And if the numbers continue to drop by the year 2070, Christians will be the minority faith at 35 to 46%, while other religions are projected to grow. America will no longer be known as a mixing pot for its diverse cultures, but a mixing pot for its diverse religions. Like East Asia or West Africa, soon America will be like the Roman Empire. And we all know what happened to Christians in the Roman Empire. There are dozens of reasons why Christianity is dying in the number one Christian country in the world. But there has to be a single causality, a pattern, that is seen in every person, regardless of the reasoning as to why they are walking away from Jesus and picking their own false gods. In 2022, the American Bible Society asked believers how often they read the Bible on their own outside of Christian services. Only 10% said they do so every day. A shocking 40% never touch their Bibles outside of church service. In a congregation of about 200, That means 20 of you right now read your Bible every day, but 80 of you don't even bother to read at all. And I'm talking about Christians here. There's more. That same year in 2022, Gallup did a study and found that only 20% of American Christians believe the Bible to be the literal word of God. 78% believe that the Bible is not the literal word of God, saying that scripture to them was about moral precepts of history or even fables. Also believing it to be the inspired word of God and not everything should be taken literally. Looking back at these numbers, there are two things we notice right off the bat. Bible sales are at an all-time high, but Christianity isn't at an all-time low. So the problem is not the Word of God. In fact, the American Bible Society says that 87% of Americans have a Bible in their house. That's 9 out of every 10 Americans. They even said the average household has at least three Bibles. The number of people who identify as Christians is dropping, while the number of Christian non-Bible readers is rising. Why? Because the majority of Christians believe the Bible is not the literal word of God. It's not a faith issue. It's a trust issue. You had an experience with Jesus. He called you. You heard his voice. And it changed your life so much that you're here right now. It's not about if you believe or not. The root of the issue for so many Christians is how can we trust the Bible when it was written by man? What does the Bible say about trusting man? Romans chapter 3, verse 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Let's look at another Bible verse. Jeremiah 17, 5, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusted in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. To be a good student of the Lord, you have to confirm your findings. What is the history of the Holy Bible? 66 books written in three languages, Hebrew, Koine Greek, and Aramaic, and a span of over 3,500 years by 40 authors. I mean, with 40 authors, the devil himself could have manipulated any one of them, or even half of these writers, and put anything he wanted for us to read and believe, right? How can we trust the Bible that was written by man when even the Bible itself says not to trust man himself. Any one of these writers could have made a mistake in their observation of events. They could have forgotten something important. They could have been influenced by their own sin and lied. How do we know we can trust the Bible? I've given you a reason to doubt. Now let me give you point two, a reason to believe. We're going to look at 2 Peter Chapter 1, verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Let's look at that in the ESV, the English Standard Version. I've been reading out of the King James Version. Uh, We're still on 2 Peter 1, 20. Knowing this first of all, 
that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. Wait a minute. If we're not getting the writer's interpretation, then whose interpretation are we reading? Let's go back to the King James Version, 2 Peter 1.21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Right here, God takes complete and full responsibility for not some of the Bible, but for every single word written. God said he used holy men. Another way to put that is God used righteous men or God-fearing men. How many of you know God is looking to use you this very day? God is building you up so that he can use you to do his work. Amen? Now that we know the Bible was written by God, let's go back to Romans 3, 4 and Jeremiah 17, 5, where those scriptures tell us not to trust in man. When we thought the Bible was written by man, it's, that's called a contradiction. The definition of a contradiction is a person, thing, or situation in which inconsistent elements are present or the statement of a position opposite to one already made. An example of that is in Jeremiah 17:5. Don't trust in man. But God trusts man to write the Bible. That's a contradiction. In Romans 3, 4, every man is a liar, but God uses 40 liars to write the Bible. That's a contradiction. Once God says he wrote the Bible, those contradictions turn into truths. Let me show you how. Yeah, a lot of you know the answer. To be a murderer, how many times must I kill? Just once. To be a thief, how many times must I steal? Just once. To be a liar, how many times must I lie? Just once. And if I'm a liar, should you trust me? No. Well, there you go. What was written by man is a contradiction. What is written by God is truth. Look, I've been where you are right now, never reading, not bothering with the word at all, until an event happened in my life where I needed answers. And the only place I hadn't searched yet was what saith the Lord my God? At that moment, I put all my belief into this wonderful book. But it was also at that moment a new question popped into my mind, and I realized the doubt I had overwhelmed me as I asked myself, is the Bible truth? That was back in 2019. I don't remember how many months I spent studying and searching, diligently seeking out God. But I can tell you that when you search out the Lord with all your heart, He doesn't hide from you. God just didn't give me an answer to my question. He doubled that and gave me two answers. The first one we just went through. After God gave me these answers, I wrote them out, saved them so I could always go back to them and posted, them, and posted my findings on Facebook for all to see what God had done. In other words, I was bragging on God and giving Him all the glory. At the same time all this was happening back in 2019, I was in a friendly debate with an atheist co-worker. He was showing me how science had evidence that evolution was right. I was showing him science pointed to God. Because why would God create something that said he didn't exist? I'd like to read to you what I wrote as a result of our friendly debates. Deuteronomy, we're going to start off in Deuteronomy 32.4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. We're going to look at 2 Samuel twenty two thirty one. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried, meaning tested. He is a buckler, meaning a shield, to all them that trust in him. So God is perfect. With God claiming complete and total responsibility for every single word written, in the end, the one to blame for any mistakes or any contradictions would be God, for it was the hand of God that guided the Bible in its making, letter by letter, word for word, story to story. Every single page must be perfect. Every single page must be flawless in its text and by its number, because the Bible is set by its designer. Because God is perfect, then the Bible is perfect too. I want to talk about uh, D.L. Moody, an American evangelist in the late 1800s. Some of you older folks might remember seeing him preach. He said, and I quote, The Bible in its original documents is free from error in what it says about geography, history, and science. 
as well as in what it says about God. Its authority extends to all matters about which the Bible speaks. And he continues, Revelation is a divine act. Interpretation is a human responsibility. Divine inspiration guarantees the truthfulness of God's word, but not the accuracy of our interpretation, end quote. In other words, to be a good student of the Lord, you must always refer back to the original text. Truths are being uncovered. Evidence upon evidence is being discovered. All things pointing to the Bible being truth. God's very word being revealed to us. Choice walks in and calls itself paradigm. A paradigm is when you have one piece of evidence, but two separate beliefs in how that evidence got there. The perfect example is us, humans. Evolutionists believe we evolved from nothing into what we are today. That is the newest and most updated explanation for the existence of humans and everything else. In doing research of evolution, I found that there were several beginnings of how life started. The idea of evolution continues to evolve. This is not seen as a joke. Evolutionists take pride in their ideas of how things began. It changes as new evidence is presented, but the foundation of it is the same. We are here not because of God, but because of chance through through evolution. Creationists, that's us Christians, believe in the simplicity of our existence. It was God who created us and everything in six days. So the paradigm continues in all fields of science, archaeology, geology, cosmology, biology. The findings of any one thing is split into two beliefs. There would have to be a crossover. God's word from the Bible would have to be proven scientifically to make even an atheist stop and think, could God be real? In other words, both paradigms of science and the word would have to meet at a single point. Let's start in the book of Job. The book of Job is said to be the oldest book in the Bible. The Bible is not written in chronological order, so theologians, assuming the age of Job, have dated the book to be the oldest written scripture in the Holy Bible. There are no original copies of the book of Job, but the oldest known copy was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls in the 1940s. Those scrolls date back to around when Jesus was born or before he was born. So over 2,000 years ago, it is in chapter 38 that our first paradigm sits. God speaks out of the world when to Job. God is describing the, the creation of the world in this chapter, but we are only interested in a single verse. Now remember, we're not getting the perspective of the man who wrote the book of Job. The Holy Spirit wrote the book of Job. So we're getting God's perspective as he spoke with Job. Job 38, chapter 38, verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. It's the fourth day of creation. Adam won't be created until the sixth day. Genesis 1, 16 and 19 confirms this. It says, and God made two great lights, their greater light to rule the day. That's the sun and the lesser light to rule the night. That's the moon. He made the stars also. That was a... That was verse 16. And a few verses later, we see what day it is in uh, in verse 19. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So in Job 38, 7, the sons of God would be the angels of heaven because man hadn't been created yet. Here, God is telling us that the stars sang together. Either they have a voice and are actually singing, or the stars are making a sound that sounds like a musical instrument. My thoughts are on the latter. Our second paradigm is astro-seismology. Astro-seismology was introduced by British astronomer Douglas Gow in the late 1900s. Sorry, in 1983. Astro-seismology is the study of vibrations in the material that make up stars. It measures the rhythmic flickers of stars to determine their mass diameter, age, and even the inner composition of what the star is made of. Remember that Remember that childhood question we all sang, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Not anymore. Thanks to this guy, we can finally have our answer. 
Although it had been theorized throughout the scientific community that stars could be making sounds, a theory is not evidence. It wouldn't be until 2015 that Dr. John Paisley, a physics professor at the University of York in England, and other scientists from the, and I'm not making this name up, from the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai, India, and the Science and Technology Facilities Council Central Laser Facility in Oxfordshire, England. Together, they have found the first evidence that stars generate their own sound. Dr. Paisley is quoted saying, and I quote, when they are accumulating new material, stars could generate sound in a very similar manner to that which we observed in the laboratory. So the stars could be singing, end quote. There are scientists, musicians, and YouTubers recording themselves making music on piano keyboards or tablets for the sounds, uh, from the sounds of different stars. The stars sang together. Finally, two separate paradigms meeting in agreement. One, a written written word of God. I'm sorry, one, a writing of God's own words, speaking of stars singing together before there was even technology to assume such things, and modern scientific evidence that confirms that stars do make their own unique sound. Finding a single mistake would put doubt in the Bible, but the opposite is also true. Finding a single truth can put trust in the very word of God. So I ask you all one last time, is the Bible truth? And right, let me, I want to give you my closing statements. Forewarned is forearmed. For our book lovers, I have Lee Strobel. He's a writer. He wrote A Case for Christ. Uh, J. Warner Wallace, he wrote A Person of Interest. Both these men were once atheists. They tried using their education and skills to prove the Bible to be false. They dug deep into the Word of God and found overwhelming evidence they were wrong. They became Christians and now have tons of information showing how the Bible is true. They each have written other books and have done many interviews. For our video watchers, we have Thomas Purefoy Jr. Uh, he has a documentary series called Is Genesis History? And Timothy Mahoney, he also has a documentary series called Patterns of Evidence. Both these men have gone out into the world and filmed the evidence proving the stories in the Bible. Using archaeology, geology, and historical accounts, their evidence is a journey to watch. They have hours of information to help you on your journey, answering the question, is the Bible truth? So why I tell you of these men? Because forewarned is forearmed. We are in a battle of knowledge and a battle of information where the, word, the world is telling us God is not needed. When right in front of us, we have evidence proving the Bible on so many different levels. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. The Strong's definition of of destroyed here means to cut off, to cease, to be brought to silence, to be cut down, to utterly be destroyed. Plainly put, you're going to die. Why? Because you didn't know what you needed to know. We are losing, and the ranks of the church are growing smaller every day. Why? Because of a lack of faith, a lack of understanding, and a lack of knowledge. Now, when I mention faith, I'm not talking about a lack of faith in Christ, but a lack of faith in the Bible. So here you go, armed with information, not ideas, not theories that you can't see or experiment with, but actual tangible evidence you can observe with your own eyes, scientific and historical. These books and videos I mentioned by the men who have done all the work are here to help you and see, uh, to here to help you see and understand that your faith was never wrong. 
that your trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was on point and true. Being armed with knowledge is great, but without Jesus, you won't go far. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because if you, con if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Thank you all very much for your time. Shalom.